So here we want to solve the integral using substitution first and then using integration by parts. And we have the integral of cosine of the natural log of x dx. All right, so this integral might seem pretty complex at first, but we are given a hint on how to solve it. We know that we need to use substitution first, and that's referring to u substitution, and then we should be able to use integration by parts. All right, so if we're going to use u substitution as the first step to solving this integral, what should we set equal to u? What kind of substitution should we make here? Well, typically when we use u substitution, we use it to solve an integral that involves some kind of a composite function. In other words, we have a function within another function. In this case, we have the natural log of x inside the cosine function. So we do have a composite function where the inside function is the natural log of x and the outside function is cosine. And typically when we use u substitution, we will end up setting the inside function equal to u. That's the substitution that we will make. All right, now in this problem, we will be working with integration by parts as well, which is also going to use a variable of u and v. And I want to use u in the integration by parts method. So instead of using u in our u substitution process here, I'm going to use a different variable, but the substitution process will remain the same. I'm going to let w equal the natural log of x. That's going to be our substitution for this integral. Okay, now if we go along with the u substitution process, what we need to do is take the derivative of w with respect to x. So if we do that, we will have dw dx is equal to the derivative of the natural log of x, which if you remember your derivative rules, the derivative of the natural log of x is one divided by x. All right, now at this point, it might seem like u substitution isn't really a good idea for this integral, right? I didn't mention this earlier, but typically when we use u substitution, whatever we set equal to u, the derivative of that function should be found somewhere else within the integral. And as you can see in this case, the derivative of the natural log of x, one divided by x, is nowhere to be seen in this integral. And so it sort of seems like we're stuck at this point. It's not entirely clear how u substitution is helpful at all for solving this integral. And so when you're in a scenario like this where you know you need to use u substitution, but it just doesn't seem to be helping you at all, the first thing that I would recommend that you try to do is solve for dx in this expression where you have your derivative. See if you can represent dx in terms of u, or in this case, w. Right, because if we want to get this integral in terms of w, we already set the natural log of x equal to w, so the only thing that's left to rewrite in terms of w is dx. We would like that to be some term that includes dw. And so let's see what happens if we solve for dx in this expression. I'll start by multiplying both sides by x and multiplying both sides by dx, or you could think of it as cross multiplication, however you like to think about that. But if we perform that multiplication, we will have that x times dw is equal to dx. All right, so now we know that dx is equal to x times dw. However, that's not entirely in terms of w yet, right? dx is equal to dw, but it's also multiplied by x, which is not in terms of w. So maybe what we want to do at this point is determine what x is equal to in terms of w. And in order to figure that out, we can look back to our original substitution where we have w equal to the natural log of x. If we solve for x in this equation, then we will have x in terms of w. And the way we can solve for x in this equation is to make both sides of the equation the power of e, right? So here's what we'll have. We'll have e to the power of w is equal to e to the power of the natural log of x. We just made both sides of the equation the powers of e. And e and the natural log function are inverse functions, so they actually cancel each other out and will just leave us with this x. And so we'll find that e to the power of w is equal to x. So x is equal to e to the power of w. So if we make that substitution into this equation right here, which is what dx is equal to, we can replace this x with e to the power of w, and then we will have dx expressed in terms of w, right? We'll have e to the power of w times dw is equal to dx. dx has now been expressed in terms of w, so we can now replace dx in this integral with that expression and make our original substitution, and we will have an integral entirely in terms of w. So let's do that. That will give us the integral of cosine of w times 
e to the power of w dw. All right, so just as a reminder, we set the natural log of x equal to w, so now we made that substitution, and we also found that dx was equal to e to the power of w dw, so we made that substitution as well. But now, if I reorder the multiplication here and just rewrite this integral to look a little bit nicer, we'll have that this is equal to the integral of e to the power of w times cosine of w dw. All right, and so now we have an integral that is equivalent to what we started with, but now it's in terms of w after using substitution. And the reason why that is helpful is now this integral that we previously didn't know how to integrate is now in a form that we can recognize as being solvable using integration by parts, right? Remember that integration by parts is an integration technique that allows us to solve integrals that feature a product of two different types of functions or two different types of parts. And that could be an algebraic function, a trig function, a logarithmic function, or an exponential function. In this case, we have a product of an exponential function and a trigonometric function. And so integration by parts should be able to help us solve this integral. And if you are familiar with solving various integrals using integration by parts, you might have even already recognized this integral to be an integral where we will need to use integration by parts twice. And I'll show you why that's the case, but first we need to remember how to use integration by parts. And so I'm going to remove most of this substitution work here. I'm going to keep our original substitution because we will need to remember what we set w equal to when we get to the end of our solution because we will need to substitute back into terms of x. All right, but now let's work on integration by parts. The formula for integration by parts looks like this. The integral of u times dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. All right, so this integral right here in this formula represents the integral that we are trying to solve, where we have a product of two different parts. And what we're saying is that if we can identify u and dv, we can use those two values to rewrite the integral in this way into these two different terms, where this integral should be easier to solve than the original integral. All right, but what we have to determine here is in our integral, which of these two parts is u and which of them is dv. And the way we do that is by choosing what to set equal to u and then everything else in the integral will be dv. Now there's a couple different ways to go about choosing what u should be equal to, but the most common way is to remember an acronym and that acronym is this right here, LIATE, and essentially what it is is a priority list of what we should set equal to u first. So once you've identified the parts in your integral, in our case we have an exponential part and a trig part, what you want to do is look for which of those parts comes first in this priority list from the top down. In this case we don't have a logarithmic part, we don't have an inverse trig part, we don't have an algebraic part, which would be something like x squared or x cubed or just x, but we do have a trig part. And so since that comes before exponential, I'm going to choose to set u equal to the trig function, and then dv will be the rest of the integral. All right, now just a side note, technically you could choose the exponential part to also be u. These last two parts in this acronym are interchangeable. We could also solve this integral by setting e to the power of w equal to u. That would also work, but I think it's going to be easier to set cosine w equal to u instead. All right, so that's just what I'm going to go with. But if you are familiar with this acronym, then you might know that these last two are interchangeable. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and set u equal to cosine w. So we'll have u equals cosine w. And so that means that dv will be equal to e to the power of w dw. So we'll have e to the power of w dw. All right, so cosine w, that is now equal to u, and then e to the power of w dw is now dv. So now we have shown how this integral is this integral right here in our integration by parts formula. Now what we wanna do is rewrite it to be these two terms. But notice that we need v and du, which we don't have. But we can find those values by taking the derivative of u and integrating dv. So let's do that. We'll take a derivative of u with respect to w, and that will be equal to the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine, so we'll have negative sine w, and then we wanna solve for du, so I'm going to multiply both sides by dw, and we'll have that du is equal to negative sine w dw. 
All right, so that's du, but now we need v, and we can find v by integrating dv. So if we take the integral of dv, then we need to take the integral of e to the power of w dw. The integral of dv will just be v, and that will be equal to the integral of e to the power of w dw. But if you know your integration rules, the integral of e to the power of w dw or e to the power of x dx is just e to the power of x or e to the power of w. So we'll just have e to the power of w. Okay, so now we have du and v. Now we can use those values to rewrite our integral into these two terms. So let's do that. We'll start with u multiplied by v. So we'll have cosine w times e to the power of w. So I'll write that down. This integral is equal to cosine w times e to the power of w. And then we will be subtracting the integral of v times du. And v is e to the power of w and du is negative sine w dw. So we'll have e to the power of w times negative sine w dw. All right, now to simplify a little bit, this negative and this negative will cancel out to become positive. So this will be equal to cosine w times e to the power of w plus the integral of e to the power of w times sine w dw. All right, and so now we have a new integral that theoretically, after using integration by parts, should be easier to solve. However, that's not quite the case. We have another integral where we have a product of two parts where those parts are different types of functions. We have another exponential function times another trig function. However, if we use integration by parts a second time on this integral and set u equal to sine, the derivative of sine will be cosine. And so we're going to get this integral again, but we'll have e to the power of w times cosine, which is what we started with. And that's going to be the key. That's what's important to notice here. And so if you didn't quite follow my logic there, I'm gonna go through those steps now. What we wanna do is use integration by parts again, but for this integral right here. All right, so I'm going to erase our previous work here, and we're gonna go through the integration by parts method again. Now, if you wanted to, you could use subscripts for u and v. You can make the previous integration by parts work, have u sub one, dv sub one, v sub one, and du sub one. And then for this second set of integration by parts work, you would have a subscript of two. It's up to you if you want to do that. Sometimes that can be helpful for organizing your work. But in this case, I'm just going to try to keep things simple and not use any subscripts. But I just want to make it clear that we are using a new set of u and dv. This is a second set of integration by parts work. All right, so what we're going to do is set u equal to the trig function. We'll have sine w and we'll set dv equal to everything else. So we'll have e to the power of w dw once again. All right, so we'll have e to the power of w dw. Now, just like we did previously, we need to find a derivative of u and the integral of dv so that we can get du and v. Notice that we had the same dv that we had last time. So the integral of dv is equal to the integral of e to the power of w dw, which just gives us that v is equal to e to the power of w. All right, now for the derivative of sine w, or the derivative of u, we will have du dw is equal to the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So we'll have cosine w, and then we'll have that du is equal to cosine w dw if we multiply both sides by dw. All right, so now we have du and v. Now let's rewrite this integral using the integration by parts formula. This will be equal to cosine w times e to the power of w plus our two new terms that are going to replace this integral. We'll start with u times v. So we'll have sine w times e to the power of w. So I'll write that in. We'll have sine w times e to the power of w. And then we will subtract the integral of v times du. And v is e to the power of w and du is cosine w dw. Okay, so I'll write that in. We'll have e to the power of w times cosine w dw. All right, now if I simplify a little bit, I'm just going to remove these parentheses and write everything in the same color. And now notice with this new integral that as I predicted earlier, would also require the use of integration by parts. This integral right here is actually the exact same integral that we started with after we made our substitution. Now I actually erased that integral, so I'm gonna rewrite it in here. What we had said that our original integral was equal to 
by using substitution was that this is equal to the integral of cosine w times e to the power of w dw, right? After we used this substitution of setting w equal to the natural log of x, we found that dx was equal to e to the power of w dw, and so this integral was equal to this integral. And notice that this integral, which we're saying that these three terms are equal to, this is the same as this integral right here. And so what we can do is equate this integral to these three terms, and now what we can do is combine like terms. This integral is the same as this integral, so we can add this integral to both sides of the equation. Even though the order of the multiplication is different, they are still the same integral. Cosine w times e to the power of w is the same as e to the power of w times cosine w. So we can combine these integrals and have two times the integral of cosine w times e to the power of w dw is equal to cosine w times e to the power of w plus sine w times e to the power of w. All right, so since these integrals are the same, we could add this one over to the other side, and so we have one integral plus another, so we have two of those integrals. And since this integral, excluding the two, is what this integral is equal to, if we divide both sides by that two, then we will have two terms that would be the solution of this integral. So if we divide both sides by two, we'll have that the integral of cosine w times e to the power of w dw is equal to one half times cosine w times e to the power of w plus one half times sine w times e to the power of w. And at this point, we should probably also add our constant of integration. Since we don't have any more integrals in our solution here, we now have the terms that our integral is equal to at least when our integral is written in terms of w, right? Remember that this integral is the same as this integral, but this is in terms of x and this is in terms of w. This is still using our substitution from the beginning of this video. So we're actually not quite done yet. Although this answer right here would technically be the solution to our integral, it's still in terms of w, our substitution. So what we have to do is substitute back into terms of x. And so we need to replace each of these w's with what w is equal to, which is the natural log of x. So let's do that next. We will have that our integral is equal to one half times cosine of the natural log of x times e to the power of the natural log of x plus one half times sine of the natural log of x times e to the power of the natural log of x plus c. All right, now at this point, you might be tempted to just box in this answer and call it a day, but we can actually simplify it further. Remember that e and the natural log are inverse functions, so they will cancel each other out and just leave us with x, and that will also occur over here. So I'll cross those out, and we'll have that this is equal to one half times cosine of the natural log of x times x plus one half times sine of the natural log of x times x plus c. And now we would have the correct solution to our original integral. But I am going to make one more simplification, which is to pull out a common factor out of these two terms, which is the fact that both of them include a one half x within them. So I'm gonna pull one half x out of these two terms, and then we'll have our final solution. So this will be equal to one half times x times cosine of the natural log of x plus sine of the natural log of x plus c. And that is the solution to our original integral, the integral of cosine of the natural log of x dx. All right, and so with that, that is the end of this problem. But if you wanna see some more examples of using integration by parts, feel free to check out the video that I have linked here on the screen. And if you wanna learn more about other topics in Calculus 2, feel free to check out my playlist of all of my Calculus 2 videos that is also here on the screen for you to click on. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.